So Capcom's more neglected IP in recent years has come back in the form of Dead Rising Deluxe Remaster. It didn't get a full Resident Evil treatment, but also not a bog standard slap a few HD textures on it and call it a remaster. It's a hell of an upgrade over the original, with new controls, models, voice acting and lighting. It's not perfect and has its pitfalls, which is why I'd consider this game a bit of a complicated one. <laughs> The game is cut for cut identical to the original, so much so that the quirks like the glitches that let you cheese the bosses are still apparent here. Meaning whatever tech they used to carry this game over to the RE engine worked wonders at keeping quite literally everything from the original game. The transfer over to this engine also gave the game its incredible looks. The insane jump of fidelity gives this whole game a well deserved fresh coat of paint. It's strange because if you go into this having played the originals like I have, you'll have this sense of rediscovery, like playing it for the first time again. All of the new eye candy comes together to deliver this weird fever dream where everything is in the right place like before, yet you're excited once again to explore it. I will say that this doesn't hold a candle to the RE remakes. It's superb looking, I don't want you to think that it's not, but there is a thin layer of jank to the visuals that throws it off a little. The models keeping that Dead Rising 1 art style with Frank being short and bulky make him stick out like a sore thumb compared to how gorgeous the atmosphere is. But there also is something charming about the way it looks. I was honestly worried about going into this and it looking like Resident Evil, but it doesn't feel that way. One of the biggest changes here is actually from the main character Frank West. His look and voice is totally changed and whilst first impressions were that this change was for the worse, I actually started to quite like him towards the end. Uh, hey, we're not done talking yet. He doesn't carry the same cheesiness that the original did, but when I heard the I've covered wars, you know, line, I knew they were going for a different iteration of the character here. I've covered wars, you know. One that's definitely light years better than his portray in the fourth game, but is not as iconic as the original. You can, however, play with that original look for him if you want, but the new one does suit the voice a whole lot better. The heart of this game being the mall has so much detail packed into it that wasting your precious limited time in this game is easy. There are so many different places to explore. These are split into plazas with a leisure park connecting them in the center. You can grab items from the shelves throughout the mall and use these as weapons, which adds a lot of gameplay variety. I'm not sure if the original had this, but there's a tannoy system that tells shoppers what's going on in the mall. It made what was already an immersive mall have that feeling of being real and truly lived in. That's right, starting next month on the 10th, we will be celebrating three glorious years of serving you and the greater Willamette community. I do know however that the cop zombies never used to shoot their gun, which was a feature in the beta build of the original, but never made it to the final release. So to see these beta features return was a nice touch that Capcom could have easily glossed over. Like I said previously here, this new look for the game proper refreshed my experience, and I had a genuine fun time going through and seeing what everything now looks like. If you've never played Dead Rising before, you'll also get the same feeling, but obviously minus the retrospect. The mall just offers so many hours of gameplay alone. There is also a story here that has you trying to uncover the truth of the mall zombie outbreak. This storyline is not one of Dead Rising's strong points, with a very deliberate B-movie type vibe to it all that's very predictable and won't offer any surprises. It does have very interesting characters sprinkled throughout that will make the story not a complete bad time. It's funny how these characters also have amazing reimagining, like their new looks and voices are superb, but the main character of the game, Frank West, got done a little dirty in my opinion when compared. Anyway, the story of Dead Rising just isn't something to write home about, and if at any point you fail to show up to these story moments, the truth will vanish and you'll be forced to load a previous save or restart the game completely whilst keeping your status. In a way, kind of like a new game plus. I actually had this happen to me quite early on during my playthrough, as I was trying to cram in just too much and lost track of time. It was super frustrating, but if you are into that sort of unforgivingness in games, then you're going to enjoy how stress-inducing the time limit really is. This game almost plays like a roguelike, where you'll want to repeat the game over and over to get 100%. You only have 72 hours here, so 100% in the game and a single playthrough is not going to happen. It's specifically designed like this to make it so that you do more runs of the game, memorize where the survivors are and what items are where. That's why I've always thought the time limit in this game is so genius. 
It's built from the ground up with it in mind, so I'm super glad to see that they didn't remove that. You can actually just fail the main story and then go explore and have fun in your time limit, but playing the story under this limit whilst being tempted to say fight psychopaths or save survivors is part of that original Dead Rising experience. Saving survivors or killing the psychopaths is most if not all of what the game's side missions have to offer. Firstly, the survivors in this game have been slightly improved. They were notoriously dumb in the base game and had some terrible pathing. However, they actually put up a decent fight in this one and follow you when asked to, but unfortunately, the pathing just still isn't there. I'm not sure if it has actually been tweaked, but so many times did the survivors get stuck on lampposts, walls, doors, etc. Cycling through them to give them the right item as well is still tedious and accidentally hitting them when trying to get zombies off them is just as frustrating this time around. It would have been cool if there was just a button to grab zombies off of survivors, but that feature didn't exist from what I could see. I do appreciate that the survivors along with all NPCs now have spoken dialogue. This was just simply text you read in the original so this added back and forth voice acting adds so much more immersion. It extends to the calls you get over the receiver as well. The survivors also point out photo op locations and interesting items, which actually made them feel like humans. Crazy I know, but the way they interact with Frank during your gameplay was great. Frank! Th th there's something there! The psychopaths on the other hand haven't had any major changes, other than a few of them being censored due to their offensive nature. None of these changes are as crazy as the media have made them out to be in my opinion and nothing I think of fondly of the original was removed, so I don't think the censorship really affects the experience. One bad thing about this game having not so many changes to the original, are that some of these psychopaths and boss fights are just not really interesting to fight. I'm specifically talking about the ones that involve vehicles, those just don't complement the gameplay of this game at all, and just kind of end up being a frantic loop of baiting them, getting a few hits in, waiting and repeating. That brings us into the combat of the game, which is in no means bad, but I was just hoping they would improve it a little bit. For example, shooting in this game now lets you move whilst taking aim, which is great. But when you shoot your weapon, your character has to stop for the frames that he's firing. This quirk extends to the melee combat as well, which causes this awkward stop-start flow to your attacks. It would have been fantastic if all the weapons in this game could just be like the chainsaw, where you can just run forward and attack over and over to clear a path. This game is clearly being treated more of a remaster than a remake like we've discussed, so these massive overhauls to the combat that they could have done, although I would have loved to see it, it can't really be expected. If you are hoping for this game to still be challenging like the original, then I think you're going to be pleased with how they handled that aspect. I could actually feel the game being a lot easier in difficulty at times, but that wasn't actually the difficulty itself. You see, because this version of the game is way more intuitive and user-friendly, you are spending less time fighting with the game's controls, meaning moment-to-moment -moment gameplay is less frustrating, but it also remains that hardcore, unforgiving experience that players might want. This user experience also extends to the UI, which is a great change overall. It does steer away from the news channel look of the original, but everything still does feel very on-brand, and I actually like the slimmer, more decluttered look that this has, so I can focus on the game. The pause screen also has this cool look at your character, with all of Frank's stats beside it. Every menu here was easy to find, and overall an enjoyable experience when you have to use it. The arrow UI from the original has also been completely replaced with a more modern compass. It's definitely better and makes navigating the mall easier, but it seems to take the same points on the map that the arrow did. And the way the arrow worked was it was essentially waypoints that were put down by the developers and you would go to these waypoints and when you would reach them the arrow would change direction completely. This same thing happens with the compass here. I wouldn't say it was particularly frustrating, it's just interesting how they carried it over. There's also a new clothing locker system that makes changing outfits a whole lot easier. The idea behind everything you collect in the mall being stored here gives you a great incentive to go hunting for specific clothing pieces. This incentive wasn't really there in the original. There are also some that are unlocked through the game's challenges. These challenges range heavily from easy to hard, like killing one psychopath to getting at least 50 survivors out of the mall. There is quite a large amount of content here to go through, but it's also packaged in this quite short playthrough due to the time limit, meaning you'll have to do at least 4-5 to five playthroughs to get everything done. All the activities offer something for different types of players as well, like the photo ops are the game's collectible, 
and finding all of them will take a while. Then, like mentioned, getting the survivors out and killing the psychopaths is for the people that like the proper stressful challenge. There is also just a leveling system in the game, which is done in a way that feels truly rewarding for doing quite literally anything. And when you level up, not only does your health and attack power go up, but you gain skills that are so damn fun to discover, and a lot of them show off that extremely goofy side to the game. I think if you're a new player, then this version is great, and you're going to enjoy it a lot. And for the people that are already adept with the series, it's tough to say it's going to completely blow you away due to its lack of iteration, but like mentioned, as someone who's played the original, I had a blast. I think Dead Rising Deluxe Remaster is easily a buy for fans of the series or newcomers alike. This game is not full priced either at $50, I think that price well reflects how much game you're getting here, as well as all the stuff that I've mentioned that Capcom have added to the original game. And past the price point, it's well worth your time even if you just play one playthrough. If you've played the game, I want to know your thoughts in the comments, and if you want to see my review on Astrobot, go ahead and click that on the right. Otherwise, I think you should click the video on the left where I got my girlfriend to try Assassin's Creed for the very first time.